Hey, thank you for coming back to Spirit Music Meetup. Mike Burris here. And you made it to Man's Might and Power page. You know, you hear that phrase a lot in church over the years. Might and power. Well, that's from Zechariah 4.6. It's a prophecy about the transition from the Old Covenant to the New Covenant. It was no longer going to be through the external resources of man that he could bring to the table. And that's the word might in the Hebrew and the Greek, Septuagint. And it's no longer going to be by power. And in the Hebrew and Greek, that's the meaning of internal abilities, inherent abilities. It's no longer going to be based on man, in other words, his external or internal resources. God is going to bring the new covenant by my spirit. The whole relationship with God, the whole way that we relate to God in the new covenant is by his Holy Spirit. This was the promise. So go check out the page called The Promise, The Promise of the Holy Spirit. And uh, this is very important because it's, it's not by man's abilities anymore or what he can bring to the table. And that's what this is all about. It's very important because we can't rely on ourselves anymore. So faith means to trust or rely on someone. Someone who's hopefully trustworthy. And that word, pistis, means to trust or rely on someone, to depend on them. <coughs> Excuse me. And so there is a page on trusting, relying faith. But we're on this page right here. All skill levels of musicians and students are welcome. And that's because we're not going to rely on our might and power. And all the drum lessons are geared from five years old up. I mean, I've, I've done, I think, even younger than five years old. So it doesn't really depend on what you bring to the table. It's really learning from that point on. So, you know, that's what this ministry is about. It doesn't show partiality or favoritism. That's the nature of God, to not show that. And that's why there's a page called Children and the Least Among Us. <coughs> Excuse me. Just had a little power shake and it's gone down the wrong pipe. So we really welcome all kinds of people to this, this um, organization so we can learn together. It's not about me wearing all the hats. I have a lot of different kind of hats, different performances. Make drumming great again. <laughs> so it's about passion, getting anointing that's in the presence of God, and being filled up by His Spirit and learning how to hear and to speak and to feel His rhema words and to play spontaneously by that trusting, relying dependence. But I have a lot of drum students that don't get into any of that, and that's that's fine for them. They're, they're working on their drumming. But there's all kinds of things out here about going beyond our own might and power, our own skill. So there's a page on skill because that zeroes in on that particular aspect of, of might and power, which is your internal abilities, your internal power. So we want to go beyond those limitations. And we want to rely and depend and trust on the Lord to give us his abilities. He's the master musician. He's the master teacher. And so you want to read what we have here about uh, how we're going to do this in our mission. Uh, musicians are, are obsessed about acquiring skill and being professional uh, in their sound and musicianship. But we want to go beyond that. We want to go beyond our gear and our, the pride of all our equipment and gear, all the $100,000 I've spent on gear. We want to go beyond that. We want to go into the, the abilities and the resources of God. So that's what this page is about. I uh, have come close to quitting so many times 
because I got all wrapped up in might and, and power. And the, move, the goalpost keeps moving. You know, as you get more and more professional, you, uh, you find that the goalpost gets moved a lot of times. And so you can really get depressed. And so we want to go beyond that. <coughs> Excuse me. We don't want to uh, get all wrapped up in this skill evaluation of ourselves or others. You know, this, this, I've seen a lot of musicians in their ego. And we want to get out of that and really be able to work with everybody. It's really not about what skill level you start out at, okay? And I, I really emphasize that. Please don't tell me what you do and don't know. Let me evaluate it. You know, I'm going to see exactly what's there. You know, a lot of drummers learn a lot of bad habits that just don't work over a lifetime. I've been in 37 bands, taught over 5,000 students. And I just have learned so much, and I want to pass that on to you. You know, time is running out for the world, and it's running certainly out for me. I'm 62, so I got a, I got a streak to the end here. And hopefully this will outlive us all. This is a community, this organization, and I want you to teach one another. Um, again, I'm just one voice, but I'm trying to pass on, you know, <laughs> drumming since I was eight years old, 1968. You know, in 37 plus bands, 1,000 musicians, I crazy. So I'm going to pass that on to you, but we need to go beyond our skill levels. And we're going to learn from each other and from the Lord. That's the most important. He's the master musician. Uh, you know, there's a great jazz drummer, uh, John Riley, that talks about the gift and how... People say, oh, you got the gift of drumming, or you got the gift of this, or whatever. And I like what he said, basically, is that the gift actually is that you'll sit down here and you find it fascinating to sit there and practice endless hours on your drum set. I teach a lot of drum line, that's why I have a practice pad here. You know, I'm getting older, so I'm not as fast, but I have the knowledge, and I want to pass that on to you. So, we find this fascinating. That's really the gift. I mean, that's something that God put inside you, that you are absolutely enthralled and fascinated with rhythm, or whatever it is that you're into. This is really a gift. And so, we want to... Um, Try to use our time here on this planet wisely. There's a lot of people really wasting it. And I have a lot of stuff about how to manage your time better so you can reach your goals. You don't want all these distractions in life robbing you from your dreams. So you can look at that. Hey, let's. there's going to be a lot of blog topics down here added over time. But here's a lot that will get you started on this conversation. And really, it's you guys down in the comments on this video, and particularly on the webpage for all these different blogs that you guys teach one another. That's what body of Christ ministry means, all parts working together. No one part more significant than the other. There's no hierarchy in the kingdom. There is one head, and we are all brethren. Jesus made that very clear. He says, there is only one teacher, one father, one spirit, you know, so he made it really clear there's only one, and we are all just part of him. And there's no, um, there's no hierarchy. So that's all broken down when you look at the original language and the, co and the context of those verses. So, hey, we have uh, some great ones here to start out with. Playing with skill and professionalism is just another wind of doctrine. You know, I was lectured, oh, you've got to be professional and play with great skill, you know, to honor the Lord. Well, all those verses that they quote, they just break down. They just fall apart when you actually look at them in the original language. 
you know, 900 Bibles, English Bibles, and they rarely get it right um, because they're trying to save print space. So you might want to look at Bible Info to really tap into the, the underlying languages of the Bible. So check that tab out. And so it turns out to be just another tradition of men, religious men usually, prideful men, and then it just carries on through uh, time through the church. Bl blog topic two, skill and professionalism actually shows favoritism and partiality, which God does not show. So why are we showing it? Requiring skill and professionalism. You know, God trains people if we we'll allow him to train us. He makes us into what we want to be. Uh, he's put that inside of our heart, that gift. Doesn't the old, uh, this block top three, doesn't the Old Testament teach that musicians are to be skilled and professional? No, it doesn't. Actually, all those verses just fall apart. It's just, you know, traditions of men per perpetuated through terrible translations of the Bible. And, but good translations pick it up. So blog topic number four, body of Christ ministry absolutely does not rely on skill and professionalism. Body of Christ ministry are gifts of the Holy Spirit. They're not natural talents that you can be proud of. They're not your might and power, right? It's not by might or power, but by my spirit. So don't get that confused, and there's a whole topic on that. Entertainment of the Saints. This is the next blog, five. Entertainment of the Saints by skilled professionals on a stage. Well, we find this whole architecture of an elevated stage to come from Roman and, uh, Roman and Greek temples. These are pagan ideas of worship, and that's all that Constantine know, you know, knew when he created the Basilica, which is the modern-day church, the shape of the modern-day church. You know, four walls, elevated stage, a platform where one person can be looked up to. This is, it comes from those pagan rituals. But also the idea, a lot of stuff got borrowed from the Old Testament. And this borrowing from the Old Testament is the foundation of the Great Wall. There's a tab called the Great Wall, quenching the Holy Spirit. And borrowing from the world is building that wall on top of that false foundation. So that's something the Lord showed me through a lot of amazing visions and dreams and also lots of detailed studies. So you can check that great wall out. So uh, the entertainment of the saints. I've been in 15 worship ministries and for a long time, since 1980. played in them all. And um, I've seen A to Z, most of it's very professional, very much like the Vegas shows quality that I've done. And it's not anything different than the world. And this is not what God envisioned for worship. Blog topic number six, the Lord can teach you to practice and play by the Spirit with His skill. Yeah, that's where we're going with this website. This whole organization, you know, all the videos, all the clinics. He loves to watch us learn. He loves to help us learn. If we will learn how to learn. If we learn how to learn from him. If we learn how to see hear and feel by the Spirit. So it, the new covenant is by my Spirit, says the Lord. So that's what this page is all about. Love to have your comments after you, you know, look at those blogs. There's so much information there you can study yourself and ask the Lord about. And love to have your experiences, links to websites, whatever, down in the comments section of this video, but particularly on the website, because that's where it's all organized very well. So people can have an ongoing dialogue about any of these subjects. So get the word out. There's a way you can share with this ministry on this page. Share your blessings. It's very important to, uh, we don't have a lot of time left. You can see the news. You can see the one world government uh, starting to form. You know that the Antichrist is coming. 
I mean, it's all laid out in Scripture pretty darn clearly. And every prophet, you know, so many prophets over, over the years have seen all these things. I have a lot of, Mike's messages is called, a tab. God has given me a lot of visions and dreams about things to come. And uh, no exact dates. A lot of times I think it's going to be around the corner because I sense the great urgency. It is so powerfully pressing. But it turns out it takes a lot longer for God to work out all the details. And it's because there's a lot of resistance. There's an echelon hierarchy, demonic forces that are fighting. It's a total war in the spiritual realm. And it's for the lives of, and eternal lives of human beings. I mean, it's a massive war. And we need to participate. That's the word koinonia. We need to participate and be partners with God instead of being ignorant. The whole website is about unveiling, you know, taking the veil that's blocking our understanding of these things. Others have a lot of knowledge of this, and I, I hope they interact with this so that we can all learn together. That's what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14, that we take turns prophesying, each bring a revelation, a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, an insight, a teaching, and it goes on and on, a psalm, a hymn, a spiritual song, bringing all these things. Each of us do this so that we can take turns, to we so that we can all weigh in together. <laughs> wow, that's important. When's the last time you saw that in church? All weigh in together so that we can all learn and be encouraged together. Key word, together. That's, that's really what Koinonia Fellowship is about. And there's a tab on the bottom of every page that gives you, shows you the whole site map, everywhere you can go. But you can find everywhere you want to you know, interact with this website on the top tabs too, and particularly the blogs tab. That's where you can interact with everything on the website. Okay, so check it out. Appreciate it. God bless you. Bye-bye.